Okay, quick one here today. We're going to have a look at wrist action in the swing and short game specifically. And can I reduce it or can I eliminate it to the point where I feel like there's nothing really going on? And what does a swing that looks like there's nothing going on really have happening in the wrist? So we've got a hack motion center on my left wrist. Uh, you'll see the data popping up on the side here. Calibrated, so flexion extension is this way. Get it down to zero. Extended, flexed, deviation, radial ulna side to side. Pretty straightforward. Zero one more time so I know where I can find it on the video. Boom. Yeah, we got it. Perfect. First question is, what does a chipping motion with no wrist action look like and what does it produce? Are you really achieving what you think you are? And I think the logical progression from there is to see how much difference there is with a swing that engages wrist action. Um, do both of these wrist angles change? Does one of them become less? Does one become more? And I already kind of know because I've tested it out. But we're gonna run through it for you today. But the first task is zero wrist action. So I'm looking for something that maintains my address angle. So address, was that 36 and 34? If I make a backswing that feels normal, you can see both are reducing. Owner's oh, going down, or it's increasing slightly, sorry. Extension's definitely reducing. So my wrist is starting to go this way, but hinging very slightly as well. That was with no momentum. So the, the weight of the club makes a big difference here too. So let's try and zero everything out. So this swing is going to look like nothing's changing, nothing's changing, nothing's changing. Let's see what does change. So extension, good, oh, no good. All right, let's try and maintain those numbers. Probably didn't look like there was much going on, or at least I'd hope. So address position 40. By the time I got to the top, minus three, right? So I've gone from up here at address, gone negative, and then back towards address position. So my wrist went from here all the way down beyond and then back up again. It looked like not much though, right? Deviation, where was I? Minus 24. I've reduced that by 15, so I've gone this way, and then back down a little bit further than where I started. A little bit more uncut than where I began, so not a very good effort. In order for me to get anywhere near those address numbers staying the same, I can't just feel like I'm maintaining. That's not going to work. The reality is here, to get those to stay stable, I'm going to have to feel like I increase this going back. And if anything, I uncock going back at the same time. What does that look like? So, address 36 and 32. If I go back, if I extend back out to 36, uncock down to 32 starts to look a little bit like this okay now down the line 36 32 looks like that club way outside my hands ton of like, essentially loft on the club because of my wrist staying extended so it's going to look and feel like this which my right arm then has to do something a little bit weird to help to maintain that. So let's see how close we can get. Hopefully we get to about the same kind of address position. It's off a bit low, okay. Good luck. I think it wasn't actually a bad strike. Didn't go anywhere, but just a massive fail again. 43 down to four all the way down there one more try now on the deviation was pretty good right so this way I only changed by two degrees and then on cocks a little bit more so that me feeling the thumbs really down that was good couldn't control this one I think as soon as you're trying to move a club on a plane like an incline things are going to change in the wrist especially this way unless you had like an ultra ultra strong grip like almost 90 degrees turned then you could almost deviate it up the plane you'd have a chance but nobody chips like that maybe they should we'll give it a go 
Now one more try, I'm really going to ramp up the extension, see what we can get. Just to ridiculous levels. That was like a little mini flop shot. Best effort, still changed 21 degrees. <laughs> At impact, almost got it back. Can you see how non-functional that was as a shot? So straight off the bat, the reality is nobody is taking their wrists out of these swings. You can see there's quite a big change. I was going from plus 36-ish, like extended, down to slightly flexed at the top of the backswing on such a short shot, um, feeling like there was nothing. So my question is, how does that compare to me just making a normal motion? Let's take a quick look. So let's go with the normal one. So typically I would allow a little bit more freedom. I wouldn't be trying to really hold anything. I'm not trying to load it also. I'm using a little bit of trail arm to load it. I would describe my basic motion as quite passive in the wrists. I'm not trying to hang on, not trying to force anything, but let's see how that looks. Okay, so into a dress, where are we? Yeah, pretty much in the ballpark. Didn't even get negative. Now, there was a little bit more hinging this way, but certainly less flexing, didn't get into negative numbers. So there's a 33 degree change, it's still significant. But somewhat importantly, it was no more. It was no more than the other action. Let's go again. Quite passive in the wrists. Not trying to restrict. There will be some hinging. Pretty similar. Stayed positive, right? So I didn't get into negative. Um, deviation changed again. So what you're starting to see is there's more action going on this way, but less this way. Now, leads me on to a really important point. If you're looking to try and take the leading edge away from contact with the ground, right, you're never going to achieve it fully. There's always going to be some. You can see the changes in the shaft lean are too significant, or wrist angles are too significant to not be leaning the shaft to some degree on these shots. No one's returning it to zero. Okay, it's a bit of a fallacy. Um, but if I were to try and go less leading edge, I'm probably going to want to try and keep extension in my wrist, or at least be moving towards it. What I don't want is a massive change here and going into flex because that's going to put me with most grips, with most grips, that's going to put me into a real diggy position. Okay, so if there was an angle that I was looking to try and get good control over, it would really be this one. But I think this one gets the bad press, right? Because you'll see this from the front. On a backswing, I rotate my forearms this way and I start to hinge the club up. People start to see this as an angle that's a problem. Now, that angle's not a problem because you're never going to deliver it down to the ground this way. Just not going to happen. That's going to start to uncock to some degree. And there is then a degree of twisting or rotating to get the club to come around. It needs to come around the hands. Right? This angle for me is not much of an issue. This is not responsible for this. What it can be responsible for is a delivery position that looks quite late. But this isn't how things line up. Right? Players that get to here and can chip well... They don't drag that continually through. The face would point 45 degrees to the right. It just doesn't happen. So there's a lot of twisting going on at the bottom. So let's push the experiment on a little bit and say, right, what if I try and add wrist cock this way? What effect will that have on my flexion extension? Okay, because I've already said that this one is the tricky one. Trying to zero things out and not have the move, still a ton of this. Can I counteract it? So we're going to go more deviation. So you see we went into radial then from 35 up into a positive number, starting to radially deviate. Does that give me better control over extension? Let's take a look. Forty-one down to plus. Oh, so I'm, I'm getting further and further away from flexed. Further and further away from it. Quite a change this way. You can see 29 into deviation, back out again. Now, crucially here, if you look at the image, which is actually there for you, my address and impact position here was very, very tight. It's within two degrees. It's not like this is being maintained the whole way. It's not going to be in any kind of trouble. What it is doing is stopping my wrist going to flex. And then I'm within nine degrees at impact this way, right? Nothing dramatic to deal with. Let's go again. I'm going to add a little bit more. So dress position is still reasonable. 
So we're going to add more, let's call it a vertical hinge this way. And I'm going to try and gain control over my flex and extension through that mechanism. Nice 38 address, 19. So I'm miles away, miles away from this now. Sizable change, 34 to plus 4, 38 degree change this way again, but down to 36 by the time I hit it, so within 2 degrees. All right, this is not getting me in any kind of trouble. Ultimately, I'm actually delivering less shaft lean with more wrist hinge this way than trying to zero everything out. You see, my wrist position is dramatically different. So, long story short, because it is supposed to be a short video, if you want to gain control over your wrists, you need to choose your battle. All right? And what I mean by that is you have to look at the one that causes the most damage. And for me, it's going this way into the golf ball. It's not this one. If anything, this, when done correctly, will provide a safety net as far as this goes. All right? Trying to gain total control over it doesn't work. You've seen it. I've tried it. I'm pretty decent with wedges. And I couldn't get close to making it a level line with no real change. There were big changes going on without any input from me. I was trying to do the dead opposite, even trying to twist the opposite still didn't work. But me adding a move in one direction to counteract a bad move in the other worked really nicely. All right, so please do not be afraid of using your wrist. Just make sure you use them in a way that's most effective at stopping the club digging into the ground.